Hey guys, we are live. This is Jennifer Seymour with The Shooter's Mindset. We are live with episode 350 with Greg Bell. We thought that it, we had a little technical difficulties tonight. And by we, I mean the me part of we had the technical difficulties, not the boys. They were fine. They were here. Um, my computer wanted to act dumb all of a sudden. But anyway, it's good. We're here now. We're going to have a good show. Got our co-host, Greg Cannon. How's it going? Oh, uh, Pretty good. All right. And our guest of the hour, Mr. Greg Bell. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you all very much for having me on. So for anybody that doesn't know you, um, tell us a little bit about how you got into competitive shooting and just a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm, um, I farm full time in a little bit of town in Arkansas. I farm with my dad and my brother. We're fifth generation to farm some of our ground. Um, and farming is kind of what led me into shooting because um, I think it was 2011 or 2012, um, a seed company sent me and some other guys on a tour up in the Midwest to look at some of their production facilities. Well, while I was there, I met a short, stocky little joker named Dustin Morris. And so this was a year or two years before Dustin won the PRS um, series. And um, anyway, I got to be friends with Dustin. And um, he told me about this sport that he was shooting. And um, anyway, it just kind of went from there. I stayed in touch with him and kind of followed along with the sport. And then probably three, two or three years later, I started finding out where matches were and getting my feet wet and, um, you know, just kind of took off from there. But really, I guess I credit Dustin with, with a lot of that, um, just for even, I just didn't even know it existed until I met him. And the rest is history, huh? A long history. I, yeah, I feel like I've been in this for a long time, but not as long as other people, I guess. <laughs> I will, I gotta be honest. So whenever I have a shooter that we're interviewing, a lot of times I have some friends that have been in this sport for a long time. And so I'll, I'll ask them, I'll be like, give me a question to ask, you know, Greg Bell, give me a question to ask, you know, so-and-so if it's somebody that's been shooting for, you know, for a minute at least. So when I asked the first thing that two of the three people said was, how is he so nice? And can we clone him? Literally, that's what was asked. So you genuinely are one of the nicest people in PRS. Like you just are all the time. So how do you always manage to smile and make other people smile? Even when things aren't necessarily going your way, you might shoot a bad stage and you're still smiling and you're not throwing rifles and kicking the dirt like the rest of us. So how do you keep your good attitude? Because you really do have a good one. Well, probably a couple of different answers. One is probably everybody doesn't know me that well, and I might not seem as I might not be as nice as I seem to be. Um, I, you know, it's I, I appreciate it. it's very kind of people to say that. I don't really feel like it's always deserved. Um, I could definitely tell you I had a few squad mates this weekend um, that maybe saw me walk around with a little bit of a bad attitude. Um, it's a long story there, so I'm I'm far from perfect. Um, you know, just on a, on a, on a personal level, you know, um, I'm, I'm a Christian and, um, I do the best I can to represent, um, to represent Christ. Um, I'll tell you, I fail way more than I succeed and nobody knows my failures any better than I do. Um, but honestly, that's the basis for it. I, and I'm, I don't always succeed in trying to do that just to be very candid. Um, the joking side of me wants to tell you, the reason I can be nice is because I really don't have anything to not be nice about. You know, if I, if I shot like, um, if I shot like Austin Orgain or Clay Blackheader or some of those other guys that are winning all the time, y'all probably couldn't stand to be around me. So it's easy to be humble um, whenever you shoot the way I do at times, or at least that's how I explain it to people. Um, it's, it's pretty easy because I get humbled a lot. It feels like. I don't know. I think some of us get humbled a little bit more than you do, but <laughs> I understand it's um, no, it's very kind of people to say that. And I, I do hope that's a legacy I leave. Like I said, um, I feel like my failures are ever before me in that aspect, but that's, it, it is what it is at times. Well, I will say, I mean, that was what was said was, you know, how can we clone him? 
so that we can have more nice and honest competitors because I think your integrity really does shine through uh, more so than your shooting or anything else. And, and that is a testimony to your faith. And uh, I, I think you, you do well, Christ. I, I very much shy from that description because again, I know that I'm far from perfect. And I, um, boy, the things that I beat myself up over the most are the things where I kind of, you know, walk around like I've got a pickle in my mouth or something, you know, and I'm, I'm not really doing that very well, but, um, people show me grace and I'm very grateful for that. So, um, I guess that's part of it, but very kind of people to say that. That's, that's good. I think that is definitely the thing. If anybody went up to anybody and said, Greg Bell, they would immediately say nicest guy on PRS. So I that. would disagree. I know a lot of other nicer guys. Um, you know, I think of Dan Jarecki and, and John Kyle Truitt. And uh, some of those guys to me are way nicer than I am. But I do appreciate being put in the same category. <laughs> Listen, so, with, with some of the nice people we have here, you know, comparing the nicest guy in PRS is like saying, you know, the, the nicest car at a Lamborghini dealership. Well, you know, that's, that's um, one of the things that, that kind of got me hooked on the sport is just how ridiculously nice everybody is. There are a lot of really good people in this sport. It's, it's been pretty amazing. Um, the friendships that I've been able to develop, um, you know, through the course of quite a few years of shooting. And it's just, you know, I, I don't know how I could quit shooting because I wouldn't get to see my friends anymore. So I understand that. I'm the same way. I'm like, I just want to see all my friends. <laughs> so... Well, one of the reasons that we wanted to have you on the show is a little project that you're working on with some fellow shooters. Tell us what y'all got going. Yes, ma'am. Um, so um, I was, you know, really, I, I want to make sure credit's given where credit's due. Um, there's, we're opening up, actually just opened up this last weekend, a new range in Little Rock, Arkansas, be kind of a PRS style range is what its primary emphasis is. Um, but two, two local guys, um, they really have, have done all the legwork. It's been their idea, their business model, and all those things. And that's Billy Kenny, um, another very competitive PRS shooter. And then also Trey Fleming, um, who, who also shoots as well. And um, I was just very lucky that, that they brought me in. I'm scared to even – I have to stop for a half second and see what Matt Partain <laughs> – <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so I was very lucky that in, in late, I think it was late March or early April, um, Billy contacted me and asked me, you know, if I'd be interested in meeting with them about heading up their PRS training for the new range. I said, yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I mean, I, I really have a passion to teach. I don't, I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I'm the best teacher, but I, that being said, it's something I work on a lot and I, I teach each week and um, anyway, so we met with them and, and um, as we were talking about the range and stuff, they were very, um, they were very um, just open to my suggestions on how they were doing the range and a few odd man things. Um, and it really just kind of, kind of went from there that they, they understood that I'd shot a lot of matches and that maybe I did have some input that would be worth something. And um, they were just, they've been so gracious to me to allow me to come in and be a small part of that range and to help them kind of, you know, they really had the main plan laid out, but they just allowed me to have a voice that honestly I didn't deserve, um, but it's been very kind to them. And I think we've worked well. Um, so yes, it's new range there just south of Little Rock Airport, about 15 minutes. Um, we've got 255 acres of, of area there we're shooting. So we go, obviously, you know, close range, but we actually have targets all the way out to 2,200 yards. Um, we've got, um, we've got roughly half the range open right now. The rest of it, we're waiting on just about another couple of weeks to construction of knocking down some trees. And, um, and then of course, next year, early spring, we look to be putting in our movers, um, you know, planning on some, some very good movers. Um, and then, you know, really just going from there. Um, it, it's been, I never imagined in a million years how much work goes into it, um, but it's been a lot of fun and it's really neat to see something like this happen. I can imagine. So it's not a small little range. I mean, you said 255 acres, that's 
pretty substantial. How many different ranges do you have? Do you have like, um, do, like I know at, um, you know, the, some ranges have like a UKD and a yeah. known distance and all that. So how do you have your ranges divided out? Yes, ma'am. So, so the, the A range will be a known distance, 300 to 1,000 yards. The B range is, is kind of our ELR range, but also an unknown distance as well. Uh, the C range will be for the movers for a three, five, and a 700-yard mover. Um, our D range is going to be a 600-yard carbine range. E is another long-range unknown distance, um, and so it will be out to... Uh, you know, I think it's around a thousand, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, our F range is going to be a 100, 200, 300 yard paper range where people can come in, you know, if you really want to do low development and things like that. And then we've got a permanent zero range that's protected um, year round from burns all the way around it so that that zero range doesn't have to go cold um, while other people are shooting or something like that. And that's then we have a, a pistol bay. And then, of course, we're looking at next year. Um, in early spring, putting in, you know, actually building a nice pro shop classroom and then a big covered awning area to where people can hang out. We want this to be something that's family friendly, but also shooter friendly. Um, one of the things that we all love about matches is, is hanging around after the match, before the match with your friends. And, you know, that's kind of something we want to do. And, and again, we're currently putting in RV parking slots. Um, there's so much going on. I know I'm forgetting some of it, but there's a lot going on there. That's a lot to keep up with. Yes, ma'am. And again, I'm not, <clears throat> it, thankfully it doesn't rely on my shoulders primarily. Um, the other, the two main owners are really doing a phenomenal job with it. I'm just kind of there to, I don't know, carry coffee. So do you have any plans for any one day or even two day matches? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Um, I mean, it's definitely, 100% something that we want to be involved with and to have. We're currently working with the PRS to see if we can get on the schedule there. Um, I will say Shannon has been very supportive and very helpful to us to be able to get open and everything. And and it really will just be however we can fit into their schedule. Um, but yes, ma'am, that's 100% something that we would love to be able to do. That'd be awesome. I grew up in Arkansas. I could come back and uh, go see Jonesboro again. Hey, that's where I went to college at. So, I mean, it's a good place. Right. Greg, do we have any lives? Yes, we do. Uh, Rick said, goodness gracious, is that an angel with a beautiful beard? <laughs> Which, uh, I, uh... <laughs> I can't see the chat at all, Greg, because I'm on my phone for this because my computer oh. is. Yeah. Anyway. You are. So you have to read all the lives. All right. So this is the second time Matt Partain, he really wants to know this. Um, what is your uh, skincare routine? <laughs> Apparently it's spray the berms at the range with Gramoxone and have the wind blow it back in your face and lose part of your vision for a couple of weeks. That seems to really freshen the skin up, at least in my opinion. Oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Brad Wright said Twisted Barrel is awesome. He's seen it firsthand. Kind of jealous. <clears throat> uh, Scott Peterson said, I met Greg last year and he's regularly checked on me. Check, uh, reached out just to check up and see how I'm doing. And he's always helping others. Ooh, uh, you got a volunteer RO. Eric Lundberg, the RO with the most, just said, ooh, a new place to RO. <laughs> Yeah, what Eric doesn't know is I was already planning on contacting him too. So <laughs> there we go. Eric's been, Eric's been a very good friend. And obviously, as much as he gives back to the sport, everybody knows who he is. Yeah. So uh, Chad Heckler commented on your uh, Matt, your mug. He said the French. I was about to say, I was going to uh, say you have to tell the story about your mug. Yeah, tell the story about that beautiful mug there. What mug? <laughs> I, I, it's, it started with Mark Cooper at the barrel maker two years ago, I think it was. And typical me, I was, I'm farming. I don't know if I can make it. And so at the last minute, I'm trying to find a spot. Well, Cooper thought it'd be funny to take one of my pictures and post it like it was the side of a milk carton. And 
you know, like, hey, can you please help this poor boy find a spot to the barrel maker? Well, then it just goes all around Facebook. Well, then it gets, I get to the barrel maker and uh, Ken and Missy had given, I guess, my, I don't even remember exactly what happened now. But anyway, <laughs> they made a coffee cup for Matt Partain. That coffee cup actually looks like that one. And they gave it to Partain. So me to double down on it, I had Partain take a picture with it. And then I put it on my coffee cup. And then I made a dumb comment about how dreamy Francis looked in this picture. And so <laughs> Missy made this into a coffee cup. Anyway, it's not funny to anybody but us, but it's really, really funny to like three people. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Ken, Ken Wheeler just said perfect time to join the call. I guess he just joined. <laughs> I remember the pictures floating around on Facebook. It was very funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, anyway, I really don't like being the center of attention. And I was ready for that to die very quickly. So anyway. <laughs> so the Twisted Barrel Precision Instructors um, are going to possibly helping some sniper school students. So are y'all going to have scheduled training classes in the future? I know you did some training because I actually um, sent a friend to you. Um, yes, thank you. Came out with you um, and spoke very highly of you in the training and thank said you. that wonderful. I was like, thank you so much for connecting us and because um, he's from your neck of the woods. So um, yeah. tell us how that's going to go. Are y'all going to be doing classes regularly or? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So I was I was speaking to Greg beforehand that, you know, right now with us just opening last weekend and getting off the ground, we absolutely have classes and training available. But right now, as we're trying to um, really just finish up a little bit more construction with the range and just finalize a lot of that stuff, um, we don't have any classes scheduled today. They would be available pretty much you know, whenever somebody wanted to come and train with us. But as we get another month into this and we really get our feet underneath us, then yes, there will be some dates put out. You know, it's going to be intro to precision rifle, advanced precision rifle. It's going to be a PRS clinic, one and two day type things. And then we're going to have other training as well. But just kind of your basics as we, you know, get started and get our feet going and everything else. Um, but then after that, it will be kind of dictated by what people want and what we feel like we could provide, you know, that's worth something. I definitely think it'd be worth something. I think people would like to come train with you. Oh, did you say something about another opportunity? Thank you. I appreciate you asking. So um, we actually, um, I just talked to Tate Streeter um, earlier today. Tate and John Kyle Truitt, so Impact, Precision, and Foundation Stocks. I've been working on this idea, and they get all the credit, um, but they've been working on this idea of putting on kind of like a shooting with the pros type event. And what they're going to do is bring in, you know, somewhere between eight to 10 to 12 instructors. And we're going to have, it's just basically going to be a one day type clinic, but it's going to be very different. It's really geared towards beginners. Um, you know, it's not going to be all training and it's not going to be all competition, but it's going to be training interspersed with shooting with these pros so that not only these beginners can, can get some instruction, but then they can actually shoot it and get instruction while they're shooting. Um, so we're looking at doing that in the early spring, maybe sometime in late February, early March, just depending on how the PRS schedule works out. Um, but again, this is going to be something that it's, it's primarily geared towards beginner shooters and something that we want to just be at a very affordable price point. Um, it's not about, it's not for us, it's not about making money as much as it's about being able to give back and to really get more people into the sport. And, um, and like I said, Tate, John Kyle have been gracious to want to partner with us at the range. And so we're really looking forward to kind of some opportunities there. Um, and, and again, we're looking at maybe, you know, 80 to 100 beginner shooters somewhere in there, you know, something where a lot of people can be involved, but also not be too big as well. Um, just a very low key, but hopefully very hospitable environment. If we shoot like a beginner, can we be a beginner? Um, <laughs> Absolutely. I was going to say, I've, I've been uh, shooting for quite, quite, quite a while. And uh, 
Yeah, I still feel like I should like a beginner. Yeah. I, I get it. I need to buy some consistency in a bottle because I can like have some moments of brilliance and then I have moments of just, yeah, I don't know what happens. The wheels just come off, but it is what it is. I guess we all have our days. So um, you shot the AG cup before and you're shooting. The so two questions. We'll talk about the competition a little bit too, but also, is it true that you don't want me to video any of your stages at AG cup this year? <laughs> uh, it's not only true, but I'm, I've actually hired mercenaries to keep you away from any stage I'm shooting. <laughs> But I got like such an awesome new camera and new mics and all sorts of fancy stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I love you. I'm glad you're there. Video away. But wow, what train wrecks did you capture from me both times? <laughs> <laughs> and I felt so bad because after the first time you were like, I was shooting really good until you came over in video. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry. And you're like, oh. Miss Jennifer, I really love you, but can you just stay away tomorrow? <laughs> and then I, I don't feel like I said that at all. Don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> I got to stay back. And then finally I was like, I've got to get Greg, you know, because it, it, y'all were down to, you know, not as many shooters and I wanted to give everybody fair, you know, so I was like, let me, I'll go video one more. He's doing pretty good. And then <laughs> I think you got him. Yeah. I, it wasn't good. I felt so no. bad. I was like, no, no. The only thing better than bombing a stage is having it live on Facebook, bombing a stage. <laughs> I mean, we only had an average of a thousand people watching at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a uh, surprise. I, I have the wrong oh, video. Oh, I suck again. But seriously. Nah, it, was, it was a good time. So what draws you to that particular competition? What do you think about it? What are your thoughts? Um, what excites you about it? What do you dread about it? Talk AG Cup a little bit. You know, <laughs> so I say this somewhat tongue in cheek, but at my age, so I'm 39. Um, and you know, I feel like, um, and I guess I could thank Jonathan Berry for this. Jonathan Berry is the one that told me, it's like, look, boy, we're getting a little bit older, you know, we're not going to be able to compete as much. And so I was like, thanks, Barry. I appreciate that. But anyway, um, you know, I think it's something for me that I made a commitment, you know, a year and a half ago that I was going to give it the best of my ability till I turn 40. And so um, that's not to say I'll quit shooting by then. But as I've as I've matured, as I've gotten older, there really is a drive that I just want to compete against the best. Like I don't want even I don't even want to win if the best aren't there. I just want to compete against the best. And I would that hey, the, the great thing about shooting, but the bad thing about shooting is there's only one winner. And um, but with the AG Cup, that level of competition, but also, man, for me, though, a lot of those guys are my friends or I consider them friends. And um, it's just really one spot where you have a, a group of, of guys that have just really given it their best. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, it's just really a different atmosphere, but it's so much fun to be at that. I'm going to look back one day and realize that, hey, these years were some of the best years for me because I could compete at a high level. Man, all the wins I wish I'd have had, but I could at least compete at a high level. I won't be able to do that forever. And so being able to do that now, it's nothing better than that for me. I, I want to compete against the best um, and, and let the chips fall. Um, so that, that's really a draw for me is I, I want to compete against the best. Did it, um, like, I feel like a lot of people were kind of rattled and it, it was a different mindset with, I don't know if it was the cameras, because I mean, John Scouton was there too, so it was going to be on TV and we were Facebook living it. I don't know if it was that or the money on the line or a combination of both or how difficult it was, but I feel like um, a lot of people shot differently than what I see them shoot in other matches. Um, they were much more tentative and, and all that. So how did that all affect you? 
Well, that's a good question a year later um, when I'm so old, I don't remember. Um, you know, honestly, I don't think that was as big a deal. To be honest, the money entering my mind for me would have been kryptonite. What it was for me more than anything else was I just wanted to compete and win. If they would have given out Laffy Taffy's for the first prize, that would have been fine, but that's what I wanted. And so as far as the cameras and stuff like that, I just want to compete against my peers that are the best in the world, and I want to win. Um, and, and that being said, I, I hopefully want to do it in, in the right way. But at the same time, um, the, the money wasn't the issue. I wanted that cup more than anything, the trophy. You know, I wanted steel. Um, and so, but I think everybody handles that differently. A lot of guys were going up and looking at the scores, you know, each kind of as they, you know, went throughout the day. I, I didn't have, there was nothing that that TV was going to tell me that was going to help me shoot any better. Um, but there was something that it could have told me that would make me, maybe make me shoot worse. And so, um, but each person handles that mental aspect differently. And that's just how I handle it. It's not going to help me. So just leave it alone. Very true. So you didn't look at the scoreboard, huh? No, ma'am. No. <laughs> In fact, I had purposely avoided that thing the whole match. Last stage, day two, it was a, uh, a strong side, weak side stage for me. Uh, fun, very fun stage. Tom Fuller did a phenomenal job with it, with the course fire and everything. But right before I go up there, of course, my good friend Matt Steiner goes, hey, man, you're pretty much going to have to clean this one. You ain't going to make it. <laughs> I say, well, thanks, Steiner. I appreciate it. I didn't know that. I purposely not looked at it all day long. And uh, anyway, so I went up there. But you know what? I it's, it's hard to describe that feeling, but that's what it's about. Like, I, wh where do you get that kind of rush, you know? And to be able to do that, I just turned my music up louder. And I had a smile on my face and I went up there and shot it to the best of my ability. Come to find out my ability was to drop two um, and I didn't make it to day three, but I went home with some, with some other really good shooters, you know? So it's, it is what it is. It was so much fun. And I'm so grateful for that opportunity um, that Tom and Shannon and all of them put together and, and obviously the sponsors as much as anything to allow us to have that stage. Um, it's, it's just so much fun. So Chad pointed out that only one person cleaned that stage. Was it him? It weren't me. Chad, who it were? We'll see if he answers. <laughs> you got any other lives? Uh, Matt Partain said, Greg Bell is more unique and wonderful than the smell of a new book. I, I will get you back, Partain. I promise you. <laughs> Chad said yes it was him um, <laughs> you don't have to read everything Partain says trust me I know but they're funny I'm just laughing he said he doesn't have a favorite color but it's pretty much whatever Greg Bell is wearing <laughs> so any color that Carhartt makes no well, doubt Yep. someone did ask earlier how many Carhartt shirts do you own Like historically or like currently right now? We'll, we'll um, say currently right now. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I just, yeah. it's just, yeah. it's, it's just what I wear every day to work and I just don't think about it. I say that's, that's the only pants I wear. The only pants that last. But uh, yeah, that's roughly all we have for the lives at the moment. Unless we want to go con continue with this, uh, Matt Greg bromance thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all look cute together. How does Don Scott, not a romance? It's over now. <laughs> <laughs> the bromance. We uh we have a lot of people um self-identifying as beginners to take your class. <laughs> well, I, uh, anyway, we'll have more details coming out. We've got a quite a few, you know, a couple of months in front of us, but um, it is something that we wanted to kind of just put out there that I think it'd be a lot of fun and a really neat experience. And like I said, you know, uh, Tate 
and uh, John Kyle get the credit for kind of coming up with this idea and, and, and then bringing us in with it. That would be a great class. I can't so, now. <laughs> so Rudy wants to know what rifle setup do you shoot? Um, so it's, um, well, as, as Craig Arnson would say, uh, I think he's the first one that made me aware that it's called the Oklahoma special. <laughs> and that is, uh, it's going to be a foundation Centurion stock. I run an impact action. Uh, Mr. Brian Allen, um, with 18 precision has always done all of my gunsmithing work, um, and a tangent theta scope and, oh, my favorite rifle accessory. Uh, Kent Rush uh, makes a weighted arc rail that actually attaches to an and shoots rail on the bottom of the foundation stock. And like, I've never even hit a target without that piece being on there. So I would be remiss if I didn't say that, you know, that was probably the most important part of the whole setup. I, uh, I need to get that. Yes, you do. Because I need weight I and I have an arc rail that I need to uh, convert to an arc rail. So like, I need that exact thing. I haven't missed a shot since I put that thing on there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to get up with you and get a link for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mike Bell wants to know what caliber. Uh, six Dasher. Dasher. So I thought. Dasher, Dasher. So I see a question in the comments. I finally got to see some of the comments. I'm not sure I can see them all. But um, one of the questions that I had was about your music. So you kind of alluded to it earlier when you talked about the AG Cup, you turn your music up. Um, so you always listen to music when you're at matches. So why is that? What does that music do for you? I don't know. There is, um, this goes into a rabbit hole of the mental game and a lot of other stuff that you can just really geek out on. For me, it was just... I would rather listen to music than not listen to music. So that was the extent of my thought process. Um, I do think at times it, it is just beneficial, just kind of, uh, I don't really know how to describe it. I don't think it's anything scientific. I could shoot a match without it and I feel like I would shoot just the same, but it just makes the day more enjoyable for me. It'd be interesting to see if you did without, if the music is helping you stay focused or if it's, uh helping drown out, you know, the surrounding stuff and you just focus in. Like when you I, that, maybe so. When he has I, I, that girl behind you saying, and he only needs to hit six impacts on this stage to make the next day. <laughs> yeah. What? Um, uh, no, I just enjoy it. I don't know. It makes the day go by better. What um um earbuds do you use? Um, so... I, if I don't have, anyway, I use Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus, um, even though I have an iPhone, I found that I like those the best, and I, I realized that I look very uncool with them, but I really don't even know how to lift my phone to my ear anymore, like, I, I'm not really sure how it works, um, so I love, I don't know, I just got used to having them in. <laughs> That's funny. So, everybody wants to know what is on your playlist well, inquiring minds want to know, um, you know, normally it's going to pretty much be one thing until my squad mates start to complain. And that's going to be Waylon Jennings live in 1974 album. Uh, that's pretty much it. It was 38 songs and I don't know. It's just one of my favorites. Do you have like a list of all the same things that you play over and over again or? No, it's just wailing on a loop. That's it. Yeah, until people start to like mouth me about it. It's just wailing on a loop. <laughs> we'll put you guys. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so as one of the top PRS shooters, what would you say your strongest skill is? Um, so that's a um, that's a really good question and a really tough question. Uh, I talked to a couple of people this afternoon. Uh, yes, Kent Rush was one of them, so he doesn't get mad at me. Uh, I talked to uh, I talked to Francis. Me and him had a pretty good conversation about it, and um, I think he said it really well. In that, for guys, 
like us that that are always self-diagnosing problems and trying to find those quarter percents, you know, um, that just a quarter a quarter point per stage or, you know, it's hard to ever feel like there's one thing that you're good at, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think the way I've gone back and looked at it is, you know, one of the things y'all mentioned was kind of, um, you know, wind reading, position building, time management, the mental game. Um, I think how I have gone back to look at is which, which aspect do I feel most qualified to discuss? Um, and maybe that would be kind of how I would find what I think maybe I'm competent at. I hate to say strongest, I hate to say good, but I think um, there gets to a certain point to where you're either gonna quit shooting PRS or you're gonna decide to put in the work to get better and figure out what that is. Um, I think we all can build solid positions. Um, I think wind reading is, is absolutely a skill, but it's, it's, um, it's almost like trying to capture the wind. Um, it's, you know, with your hands, I don't know exactly how you do it and how you do it consistently, um, but there's definitely a skill to it. I, I think I'm adequate at that. Um, you know, time management. Um, man, I'm a huge believer in the uh, Precision Match Timer app for the Apple Watch. Um, that thing has been just the greatest thing ever for me on time management on the clock. But I mean, <laughs> again, if you don't consider this weekend, because there will be six people there who saw me um, maybe not perfectly handle a bad situation, um, except for this weekend, I would have normally said that I think the, my mental game is 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 really improved and really been one of the things that I've worked on a lot. Well, Ron A says that uh, through watching you enough, in his opinion, it's your shot process, that it's one of the smoothest. But then he said, tied with that is your integrity and sportsmanship. Who said that? Ryan Hay. Oh, thank you very much, Ryan Hay. That's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> And Regina says your taste in music is phenomenal. Thank you, Regina. <laughs> He's actually listening to it in his in his ear, and we're on speaker. No. That your wind calls. <laughs> yeah, I, sh maybe. <laughs> Not that you know of, anyway. <laughs> um, so, if we were to unex unexpectedly put you on the spot and ask you to give our viewers like a quick two minute crash course. What, what would it kind of look like? <laughs> on, on what? On your strongest, I guess on your, your mental game. Um, so first I would tell you, I couldn't answer it in two minutes, um, but I could try to do it really quickly. Although then that goes against my, my single show note that says talk slower. Um, but, um, you know, for me, I realized probably a year and a half ago that what was holding me back uh, uh, most of all was my mental game and really a mental confidence to just be able to handle and, 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 and shoot with the guys that I thought were the best. Um, you know, if I was going to tell somebody how to improve upon that, I think, I think you can't really go very far without mentioning Lanny Basham's with winning in mind. To me, that's the foundation for everything that I've built off of. Um, that being said, I think it's a good foundation, but I also think there's, I think what you're hoping to do with these type, <clears throat> with these type resources is give yourself the ability to think and figure it out for yourself. Um, so my mental game has gone through so so many different aspects. And I think there's a lot of shooters that, you know, without putting them on the spot, I can think of two really top shooters that I think if you go, hey, what's your mental game? They go, what do you mean mental game? I just shoot, I just win. Like they've just got a kind of natural confidence and ability that I, I've never had. So for me, it's something that I have had to put a lot of work into. Um, I've, I've probably read 25 or 30 different books on the mental game from oh bowling to tennis um to archery to so many different things but all of those resources have really allowed me um to kind of fine tune my thought processes and um and it's not so much an arrogance of 
I am going to win today as much as it's just a confidence of I can absolutely shoot with anybody out there. Now, this weekend, they may beat me, but that's okay. I can shoot with them. And I, it's, um, it's just kind of a commitment to yourself to, you know, a lot of people talk about your draw at a match. Like, man, we didn't have a good draw. You know, we got a, we didn't get the long range stage. And I, you know, I don't, I've gotten to the point where I understand that there is no such thing as a bad draw. It's just only if you choose to deal with it that way, you know, it, there comes a certain point in life to where, and especially as you get older and meaner, um, you almost want the odds stacked against you a little bit because I, I want, hey, I want you to, I want things to be against me because then I still want to go out and do it. Um, and again, none of that's meant as arrogant because I've won one two day match and uh, I went and shot against some of the best last weekend. And man, they, they rolled me up, you know. I, I'm, I'm well aware of, of where I rank, you know, but at the same time, um, it's just very much a confidence in my ability. Um, it's not an arrogance, uh, and I hope it never comes off that way. I have to say that I'm not laughing at you, Greg, because um, somebody just oh, I didn't even notice. I'm so involved. Great face. But Matt Partain is killing me in the comments. And now the comments have scrolled and I can't get to them because my computer's still being stupid. Greg, you have to read the one that he um, put about. I'm him. not. The one that he put about what? All around. I, I don't want to know. Oh, it's great. Oh, the, 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 the. Yes. Say that one. Greg Bell no. is the human embodiment of the fanny pack. Just all around awesome. <laughs> Listen, if there's a collage on Facebook in the morning when you guys wake up of, of these comments. <laughs> guys, y'all have no idea. Y'all have no idea how grateful I am that he's keeping it mild. Um, we did have the talk last night about him not just completely blasting me out of the water. Listen, I wish I had friends like that that were, that were here complimenting me in the comments yeah it's a compliment all right there were other funny or some other good comments not just funny ones but now my comments are being stupid and i can't see anything but a black screen so i'm gonna like uh, kent rush had said something yeah kent rush said greg is able to be one step ahead of each shot and what his next position will be and how to set up his next position he never seems to be behind on the clock and that's definitely a, a huge skill Thank where, you very much, where you've already, you know, you're in your position. You're not thinking about, okay, hold my leg stable, but you're already, you know, your mind's there and, you know, where it needs to be at the right time. Um, I'm trying to think if we have any other ones here. Um, other than the rifle, what is your favorite gear item? Like the piece of gear that you turn around turn around and go back home to get if there's one thing well besides a kestrel and a wee bad you know mini fortune cookie and uh and all of the absolute you have you cannot leave without um i do really like can't rush his um anarchy rail i really like it i will tell you i would be remiss uh, in not mentioning um, Craig Arns and, and the Area 419 Maverick. Um, I got the chance to use that last year, and, and Craig did so much to, to make it possible for me to use that on the weekends. And, man, for me, I'm still just completely sold on the Maverick, and I really I, – I, I will always be grateful to Craig for what he did to really help me out and stuff like that. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Area 419 Maverick. That, that is a really sweet – do we call it a suppressor? Do we call it a break? What do we – what do we call it? It's a little bit of everything. Yes. Yes. The, yeah. <laughs> cool. Greg, what do you see the future of PRS? I hope they lower the age on the senior division. That's kind of what I'm loving. <laughs> for. Um, you know, that's a good question. Um, I will take that it's, a, it's so obvious right now the level of competition 
is is so crazy compared to where it used to be even just two years ago um when i got into the finale in 2018 i don't remember exactly how many points i had but i'm gonna say it was around you know 265 or so and man i was so happy to be there and had a blast it was just you know such a great time now you fast forward to this year and um, and you look at the point spread and the level of competition, it is there's a lot of really good up and coming shooters that are just that are just dominating. I mean, I'd I'd hate to go down a list of people and because I would miss some, but there's a lot of really good shooters that are coming up. And I think the level of competition is getting such that um, I don't know what that's going to look like for the PRS. I don't know how they end up spreading that out. I'm all for lots of matches because I think people vote with their dollars and their, and their feet. Um, you know, I don't know. I just see uh, obviously the sport growing. Um, I feel like Shannon and Julie have done a phenomenal job with growing the PRS. And I think you really, especially with the level of competition, I think you see that this year. Um, I hope the AG cup continues. Um, I know it requires a lot of work for a lot of people. Um, but I'm very grateful to be able to participate in that and that other people provide that opportunity. So I don't know. I see, it seems like I just get to continue to expand. And then to be honest with you, people smarter than me will have to figure out how to deal with that. <laughs> Any more lives, Greg? I look at Greg Bell the same way which we all look at giraffes, which is basically like, I bet you were just born awesome. <laughs> That's the worst one yet. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you and Matt been friends? Um, well, up until today, um, I guess it would have been, um, you know, I don't know, geez. At least two or three years. I I don't even. I really don't remember. I I don't know. I, it's it's been it's been a while, I guess. Um, and it's how long me and Matt? How, how long? More. My son's back there trying to get on camera. Um, we were friends. <laughs> no, we're. I, I'm sorry. What did you say? I said you can have him come on over. He can be on the camera. Especially if you. Uh, he's, uh, yeah. Anyway, Matt's been a really good friend. It's uh, like I said, it's another situation of the people you meet in this sport and then just how you just, I mean, we talk almost every day or actually every evening because he works the night shift at Cactus Wellhead and uh, he should be at work right now, but he's not. Um, and, um, you know, we'll talk at midnight every night or something. He's a, uh, he's a really good friend. It's awesome to have friends like that. So at times. <laughs> he's like not right now <laughs> not right now gonna work. <laughs> so I, I learned something talking with you earlier and I, I kind of got on a little squirrel tan you can actually smoke an apple pie yes I will say <clears throat> that I still and I told you that um, when you know some of the funnest matches that I've shot are the one day matches at Louisiana that <clears throat> Brian Allen and Kevin Carden put on and other people there and um, Bradley Allen used to come and cook for us uh, lunch every day. And that was the first place that I realized that not only can you, you know, he would come in and smoke chicken for us on a rotisserie, but then he would pull the chicken off and then smoke three or four apple pies on the same rotisserie. And uh, anyway, I'm a pretty big fan of it now that I realize how awesome it is. That is 100% something that's happening in my house this weekend now. It's really good. So what upcoming matches, projects, or goals do you have? You know, I think the big one, um, yeah, there's a lot. So as far as matches, um, you know, I, a goal of mine most certainly is to be able to, to get um, a bullet, you know. Um, those go to the top 10 in the season each year. And um, it will be hard for me to lay my rifle down without getting one of those one time. Um, but I also understand, you know, I'm going to give it my best. And at the end of the day, um, 
you know, I've had a lot of fun and, uh, and I mean, I don't think I'll ever quit shooting matches, but I think the pace that I'm shooting them at right now will be tough to sustain over the long haul. Um, obviously with the range, um, there's so many opportunities with this new range that I'm really excited about. Um, and I'm, I guess as much as anything, I can't wait until my I get a chance to bring my buddies in that I shoot with and see what we've done and hopefully put on a really good match. That will probably be that may be as special to me as as even being able to win one of those bullets. Um, so I'm grateful for that opportunity. Um, you know, I, but I think the main thing is the goals, you know, um, is, is to win one of those bullets. That's that's going to be hard for me to slow down until I have one of those because it, you know, I've put in a lot of work over the years and uh, that's just something I'm aiming for. That's awesome. Luke. I look forward to seeing you holding it. Yeah, me too. We'll see. Scott Peterson wants to know what is going through your mind whenever you go up and the RO is given the commands right before a stage. Hmm. It's, pro it's what's going through my mind right then. It's probably what rocks dream about, which is nothing. Um, I, you know, that's funny he asked that because um, me and Francis were talking earlier today about Francis has a very deliberate process that he goes through. And I really respect how he does that and how disciplined he is. Chad Beckler's the same way. They do a very good job with that. Um, mine is probably because of my lesser brain capacity, it's a lot more simpler. And I guess it's more of, I, I know exactly where the targets are. I'm always going to put my gun up in the air, double check, dope windage, parallax, and magnification. Um, I'm going to always double check that my mag is loaded, even though that didn't happen once this weekend. Um, you know, all of those things. But really, a lot of it is, um, you know, the last thing I tell myself is, well, what's my goal for this stage? Like, how would I shoot my best on this stage? And for me, I have to make myself slow down and just see every impact, just to see exactly where. Um, I think a lot of us, myself included, um, there's a big difference between, between looking and seeing. And a lot of times we're looking, but we're not really seeing. Like, I'll see an impact or a miss, but I'm not really seeing exactly where. Um, and so a lot of the times I really have to remind myself, hey, just see exactly where and you're going to shoot your best on that stage, at least right now with your current skill set. Matt Partain disagrees. He says that you're thinking about him. I'm done with you, Matt. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> and Francis is in the house now. He says, Greg, with a kissy face. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate to have so many good friends in this sport that have really helped me and, and Frank has been one of them and many others. I'll, I'll, I will literally not mention all of them, but I'm really lucky for people like him. That, you know, we can bounce ideas off each other and work through things. And um, I've just really been blessed with a lot of good people in this sport. That's awesome. Greg, do we have any more lives that I've missed? I can see like four at a time and then they scroll down and they're gone i think we are good on lives at the moment okay well if matt doesn't have any more um beautiful things to say to greg then i think we can wind he it doesn't. down <laughs> we'll um start with greg cannon since i have two gregs all right, uh, I like to shout out to GSL Suppressors, this cool little doohickey over here. Makes my 22 nice and silent. Um, shooters and Sharpshooters of Augusta, our local indoor and outdoor ranges. PDC Custom, the most beautiful rifle chassis known to man, available in lime green and normal human colors. Shooters World Powder, make my center fires go pew. Um, Hunter's HD Gold. Um, yeah, they really help. You can see stuff with them. I'm blind, and then I can see when I wear them. It's like cool stuff. Um, Fix it sticks because I'm always fixing something. So they're uh, they're great for that. And uh, Bortec because you're supposed to clean these things sometimes. I should clean mine. 
just thought about that after that match. I should clean it. <laughs> I tumbled my brass. That's something. All right, Greg, how about you? you? Got any Greg Bell? You got any shout outs? Yeah, I, I I know this is the one part that everybody loves the most, uh, but I, I I just so many people have done so much for me over the years that I I, I would be a fool um, to not make sure that I mention a lot of them. But you know, with everything I do in this sport, my wife, if it wasn't for her, I can't I can't do any of this. If it wasn't for my brother Ryan and the guys I work with picking up my slack every weekend, I couldn't go do this. Um, you know, and then in the sport itself. I'm very grateful for Mr. Brian Allen and uh, with 18 Precision and all he's done for me, just the guns he builds me and everything else. Um, you know, Muller Works Barrels. Um, I've been with them for the last three years, and over 20 barrels and Muller Works has been, just been above and beyond to take care of me and to help me and produce good barrels. And then of course, you know, Tate Streeter with Impact, John Kyle through a foundation. Um, if I mention everybody, it just starts to get boring. But um, I, I'm just I'm just very lucky for all the people that have, you know, I stand on a lot of other people's shoulders to be anywhere I am in this sport, and I'm very grateful for all the help they give me, especially my friends. That's awesome. Well, for my shout outs, I just want to shout you out, and thank you for coming and spending what I guess almost two hours with us. I know you're busy, you got a lot going farm and with the shooting and the range that you're getting started and um so huge shout out to you for taking time out to come on here and to do this um one more question the um the range do y'all have a website or a way to yeah. <laughs> yes ma'am um the guys that, um Billy and Trey will um, really appreciate how horrible I am at promoting the range. But yes, not only a Facebook page of, of Twisted Barrel Precision, but then also a website of twistedbarrelprecision.com. Um, obviously, any questions, um, I would really love for people to hit me up on Facebook or um, if you got my cell phone number. Um, one of the things that I enjoy more than anything else about this sport is for people to contact me and just ask me questions and for me to try to help and I really don't always have the answers <clears throat> but my personality is so many people have helped me that I love just paying that forward you know and so um you know whether it's questions about the range or questions about shooting uh, you know I hope people always feel free to, to to just contact me and I'll always do the best I can to encourage and to help them but yes uh, twistedbarrelprecision.com and the Facebook page and um and all those things I really appreciate it all right, so everybody go like the page and watch out for things on the website and uh, we'll look for some matches in the future yes, and classes. Uh, I kind of want to know when you're doing that uh, class with everybody, even if I don't uh, take it, man, I'd love to go hang out. That'd be a great group of people to hang out with. Well, I definitely think we're going to have the dates. Uh, you know, we're hoping to have maybe dates set up in another you know, month and a half to two months, realistically, we have to look at the PRS schedule and work around that because all of us are, are busy with that and things, you know, the, the instructors that are going to come in and help are, are giving up their time and um, we want to make it convenient for them to be able to attend and make it. So I, I expect to have some really solid details in the next month and a half, two months, and we'll have them out on our Facebook page. Or if you're a gamer and you're wanting to beat all the good shooters that'll be teaching that class then go shoot a match that weekend because they'll all be teaching yes. Shooting. <laughs> yes yeah we may have to keep that date under wraps absolutely yes just saying <laughs> for strategy here <laughs> not that i'm ever gonna probably win a match in my life but that's okay i'll just do it for fun so well, with that, I think we can wind down and I want to thank you again for coming on. And if there's anything that we can do to help promote um, Twisted Barrel, if y'all have, you know, if you want your class promoted, if you let us know, we can put it on the um, Facebook page for Shooter's Mindset and try and get the word out for y'all. If you need any of that, just hit either me or Greg up and we'll be glad to do that. Thank, thank y'all very much. I, I you know, I, I, I realize y'all could have a lot of the people on. I, I told Greg, I feel like y'all really reached the bottom of the barrel having me on. Um, it's like the Paps Blue Ribbon of guests. Um, but I am very grateful and I, I really appreciate y'all giving me an opportunity to just, you know, share a little bit about the range and about shooting and just 
just something that's a, a big passion of mine. So thank y'all very much. Well, we were, we think very highly of you. So I thought that it was a great choice to do. Um, I had told Greg, I don't know, a couple months ago, I was like, we got to get Greg Bell on. And then I just never got around to reaching out. I've been busy. And he said, I got Greg Bell. I was like, good. <laughs> so, thank you. Good. Thank y'all very much, guys. No problem. <laughs> did he dab? Yes, I believe he did. The whitest kid in the world, I believe. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> well, a great way to wrap it up. So that will be a wrap for episode 350, and we will see y'all next week. <laughs>